If you're normally selling websites in the two to $3,000 range, I bet you could make four to five times the revenue from the same clients if you just change the way that you initially interact with your clients. And I'll give you a little five second test here in just a second to see if this applies to you. I'm Lee Blue, I'm the founder of Double Stack, where I personally mentor some of today's top running web designers. And one of the things that we work on is that initial impression. And I'll tell you there's a deeper reason too that is really important to me, especially when you're getting into higher, high ticket web design. The local businesses that you're working with, they really need the help. Like if they're gonna buy something that's like $10,000 or more, it's a meaningful shift that they need to see in their business. And the longer they wait to make that decision, the harder it's going to be for them to be able to say yes. Imagine if it was a health problem and like a, a person comes to the doctor and the doctor says, hey, you've got these clogged arteries or whatever, and like we need to do some, some, some heart surgery. And then the client's like, well, you know, it's great talking to you. Give me a lot of great information. I'm gonna think about it. You know, I'll get back to you. And you're thinking like, dude, you might not be around in a month or so. It's like, we need to get this done right now. And they're thinking, well, I just need to think about it. And that's how it is with these local businesses. When you're approaching somebody that needs the help, it's on us to help them say yes as fast as they can so that they get the help as fast as they can so that everyone wins. So that way we get a great client, they get some great support, their customers are finding them because of the work that you're doing. Everyone's winning. And I feel like it's important for them to say yes to the level of help that they need. Another way that this can go wrong, imagine in like that heart surgery situation, the person comes in, it turns out they need heart surgery, but then the doctor says, well, you know, if you just like had a few extra salads, that would probably be fine. You know, just like try to solve the problem with like a really minimal thing that you know is not really gonna work. You're not really serving the client. Like you really need to give them what they need as fast as possible. And I think the, the, the main way I see web designers kind of falling off the rails with that is trying to pounce on the sale too fast. So let me give you like a, like a, like a framework to avoid this beginner mistake of like pouncing on the sale. So here's the five second test. So let's say that you're a local business owner, I'm the web designer, you come to me and you say, and you say, hey Lee, how much does it cost to have a website? Or like, what do you do? Like, like can you give me a, a sense of like, what kind of services you offer and what the price is? If I'm making the beginner mistake, I'm gonna pounce on the sale. And I'll probably say something like, well, how many pages do you need? Or do you need e-commerce? Or like, look at these different packages I have and here's the different prices for those. Or another thing that I might say would be, um, well, I've got this $500 package and that's really designed for people just getting started out. And then I've got this like $1,500 package. And if you wanna add e-commerce, it's probably gonna be about $3,000. It's like, I just jump into the pricing and the services having no idea what the person needs or where they're coming from. That's pouncing on the sale. So if you feel like that's your initial response, then I bet you could, you could probably charge three or four or five times what you're normally charging. Like if you normally charge 2000, I bet you could charge $10,000 from the same exact people. Like you don't have to find new clients and you don't need special fancy tools. I build most of my websites with like Beaver Builder or Cadence. Those are my two theme. I, I built most of my stuff is on WordPress. And those are the two platforms I get. It's like, those aren't secret. Everybody uses that stuff. Everyone knows about that stuff. The difference is the initial approach to the clients. So let me give you an example about, about why the approach is different. So if somebody comes to me and says, what do I do? And like, how many, like, what are the costs of my services? And then I just immediately start telling them, well, asking, well, will you tell me what you need? And I'll tell you what it costs. That's the beginner mistake. And my question to you is, what's the point of being good at anything if that's how you're gonna interact with the clients, right? Isn't the point of us being good for, for our ability to lead the client to a level of success that's better than they, would, than they would be able to get just by asking me to do stuff? And don't you feel like that's even more true right now than, than ever? Like for example, I know that the client is not going to ask me for the right stuff because they don't know what it is. Like I know, for example, I know for local business owners, one of the most important things that they can do that no one is ever going to ask you about is to synchronize the information between their Google business profile and their website. So like if you look at the Google business profile and you see that their primary category is HVAC contractor, but they don't say HVAC contractor on their website, that is a major problem. And no one's gonna say, hey Lee, can you synchronize the data between my Google business profile and my website to make sure that I come across as trustworthy and authoritative and that I actually do the services that I say? No one's gonna ask that, right? So it's on us to ask them, like to tell them the pathway to success rather than having them tell us. 
And this is the difference between being the artist and the doctor. Like I think in the past, web designers were the artists where you're like, hey, you tell me the vision that you have in your mind, I'll use my tools and skills to bring it to life and then everyone will be happy. And back then, maybe they were, maybe, maybe that was fine. But today, it's not that way at all because there's no results from that. Like the whole point of getting into high ticket web design is to produce these results. And I feel like that's just a, that's just a huge thing. And so I refuse to give prices or sell anything until I know what the problem is that I'm trying to solve. So then the question becomes, well, how do you figure out what the problem is? Like if you're not gonna pounce on the sale, you're not gonna give prices right away, what do you do instead? And I think that the solution for that is you have to have them tell you what the problem is. And this is a tricky thing, it's subtle because you can't tell them, even though if it feels like you're kind of, you're kind of revealing a problem that they already have and you're not teaching them the problem, you're just showing them the problem, that still doesn't count. They literally need to articulate what their issue is to, from them to you. And I think one of the ways that this can go off the rails, in fact, we were just talking about this in one of the coaching calls in Doublestack last week, is if you like pull up somebody's website and you say, hey, what kind, of, what kind of words do you think people might use to search for your site? And then they tell you some words, you type the words into Google and you reveal that they're not showing up for those keywords. Well, okay, yeah, that's a real problem. That's a problem that you and I would recognize as a reason why they're not getting the traffic and the leads that they want from their website and everything but they're not stressed out about that. You just expose that problem to them for the very first time right now doing that little exercise. That's not what's keeping them up at night. They're not stressed out about that at night. You know, like that's, they're not even thinking, they don't even know it. You just told them right now. And so if you wanna get more money to solve the deeper problems, to actually help clients get the results that they need, they're never gonna do it if you just show them problems. That's the old school kind of door-to-door -door salesman approach. You know, ever seen those Cutco knife commercials or whatever, where they're like, did you know that our knives can cut your shoe in half? Like, don't you need a knife like that? And so they just introduce problems that nobody cares about, right? So what we need to do is figure out how do we get to the root cause of the problem? Like, how do we get into something that's urgent for the client to say yes to at that deep level? And it's so important that I've even came up with this acronym. It's, it's, it's prove. It's like, how do you prove the value? P-R-O-V-E. And if you can remember the letters of that, that, that acronym, you can remember this pattern. And the P stands for the problem. And I wanna know what they feel like isn't performing at the level that they want. And so I literally will ask, what's not performing at the level that you want? So like, remember when just a second ago, if, if you were the local business owner, I'm the web designer, and you come to me and say, hey Lee, uh, how much does it cost to work with you? Like what kind of services do you offer and what is, what's the cost? I'm, it's not a secret that I have a web agency. I'm not trying to hide anything. And so I'll say, well, you know, I have a web agency. We specialize in helping local businesses get leads from within driving distance of their location. There's all kinds of ways we can work together. Like, what do you feel isn't performing at the level that you want right now in your business? See how easy that is? I just ask them, like I'm telling them what I'm doing. They're telling me what's not performing at the level they want. But that's just the, that's just the P. That's just the first step of this five step sequence. So then they'll probably say something about some kind of a broad problem. Hey, we're just not getting the traffic we want. We're not showing up on Google, whatever it might be. Our Facebook ads aren't working the level that we need, something like that, right? And then, but so then I need to get down to the R, which is what is the root cause of that problem according to them? Not according to me, not according to you, like what you can recognize, because you and I, we're gonna recognize all kinds of issues. But the, but the interesting thing is the client's not aware of that. Almost everybody thinks they're just one small step away from solving all of their issues. And the reason that they feel that way is because they're unaware of all the other issues that are gonna come up as soon as they solve the one that's on their mind right now. So it's not that they think that they only have one problem, it's that they're just not aware of all of the other cascading problems that will come forth as soon as they get, get to the next step. And I think that's a really huge thing to understand because if, when you're trying to onboard the client, if you start talking about all of these unknown problems to the client, it's gonna, first of all, it's gonna be exhausting for us because there's tons of unknown problems to uncover. It's gonna be exhausting for them. They're gonna feel like they're drinking from a fire hose. And, and then at the end, they're not gonna say yes. At the end, they're gonna say, wow, that, you just gave me so much information. This was a great meeting. Man, I, I gotta go back and think about this. And I don't want them to think about it, right? Like the whole point is like, however hard it is to say yes now, it's going to be harder in the future because things are going downhill, things are getting worse and that's, that's, that's no good. So what I want to do is I want them to tell me what they think the root cause is. So for example, they might say, well, the problem is we're just, we're just not getting the leads that we need. And I'll say, well, why do you, why do you feel like that is? He's like, well, we're running these Facebook ads but they're, they're just, you know, we're getting a lot of clicks, we're spending a lot of money, but there's just no conversions on them. 
And so now we're getting a little bit deeper. Okay, well, we got, a, we got an ad problem. And so I'll keep going, well, why do you think you're not getting the clicks? And so I'm diving down to, to get to where the root cause of this problem is. And sometimes they'll say, man, I don't know what I'm doing. I've never run Facebook ads before. I just tried it for the first time. I don't, I, I'm in the ad manager and I just, I don't know what I'm doing. Well, that's, that's an interesting root cause of the problem. They also might say, well, I don't know. It's like, I, I feel like I'm running the ads properly. We're getting tons of clicks. They're hitting our website, but they're just, they're just not converting. And then I'm going to look at it and I'll say, well, let's take a look and see what's going on. And most of the time I can probably tell like right away what the problem is. Like you would be shocked at how many people run ads directly to their homepage. And like, that's not going to convert. The homepage is not specific enough to the ad to get any real conversions out of that. Or maybe the ad copy is inconsistent with the landing page copy. So I'll look at that. Or maybe the call to action is just too intimate, too big of a deal. Like you're selling something expensive or something that requires education first. And you're and like the call to action on the website is, hey, I call to get started. You know, nobody's going to do that. Even if it's like a chiropractor or something like that. And like the chiropractor runs the ad to this landing page and it's like, hey, call now. It's like, well, I'm not gonna call now if I've never been to a chiropractor. I wanna learn, how does it hurt? What do I expect? What do I wear? Like there's more details that I need to know before I call in, right? So I'm gonna be looking at all that kind of stuff and then see if I can kind of ascertain what the issue is, but I'm not gonna teach. I'm not gonna say it. I'm just gonna be thinking it. So we've, we've, we're like addressing the problem. We're getting to the root cause. And then I want to know, well, hey, if, if you solve this, what is the objective that you're really trying to get to? And I need it to be a specific number. So like if they're telling me that they want more leads or they want more revenue, it's not enough to just say, I need more leads because I don't know how many that is. Do you want one more lead? Do you want a hundred more leads? And that makes a huge difference because I'm going to offer something to fix the problem. You know, like in just a minute, I'm going to put an offer out there and or at least a, a context for an offer. And it's going to be totally different if you just need like one or two extra leads a week versus if you want like a hundred leads per month. Like imagine the difference in just in the ad spend between those two objectives. And so why would I even bother say anything until I have some idea how hard we need to hit the ball, right? Like, is it, is it a putt or is it like a drive? Like it's, I need to know that. So that's where the objective is. And then I get to the V, the validate. And when, what the validate is, I'm still not teaching. I'm still not coaching. I'm still not selling. I'm just listening. And so we've established the problem. We've hit the root cause according to what they think is the root cause, not what I'm observing. We've hit the objective as to what they want. And now I'm going to validate what they said simply by summarizing everything they just, they just said. We say, hey, here's what the problem is. Here's what you think the, you know, the, the root cause is. Here's what the objective is. So if we could just solve the root cause to address that problem, then you could hit that objective, right? And then they would say yes. And sometimes they'll be like, you know, I would say maybe 90% of the time, most people can be like, yeah, that makes sense. A 10% of the time, when you do that summary, they're going to remember something they forgot to tell you, which is incredibly important. And oh, you know, I forgot to mention this thing. And then they'll tell you this other thing. And then you kind of go through those steps again. And you don't give yourself the green light to do any selling or, or coaching or teaching or anything until you get the green light where you know the problem, you know the root cause according to them, and you know the specific objective they're trying to achieve. Then you hit that validate level and you let them know that this is what you, what you're, what you feel like you're hearing. It, it, does that sound right? And then I want them to say, yes, you got it. That's it. You're a great listener. Cause I'm taking notes. Like when they're telling me this stuff, I'm going to be writing down notes and then they'll say, man, you, it's, it's great to get this off my chest. You're really great at listening. You really understand where I'm coming from. And that's so, do you see already? how that's so different from someone saying, hey, Lee, what services do you offer? And it's like, well, you know, it depends on how many pages you need. What do you need? Like, I don't even know at that point. Like, it's, I mean, if that makes any sense to you, <laughs> give me a thumbs up or, or like subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. But that's such a, that's just such a huge difference in the, in the approach to working with these clients. And then I get to the E of the prove system. And the E is, well, let me show you how we can execute the path forward. And so what that means is I'm going to be thinking about the solution that we need to offer, right? Like I kind of already know that up front. Like one of the main things that makes the, the double stack approach to web design different is this solution first concept. So like I know they need a website and a Facebook page and an email list and a Google business profile. I mean, like I know, I know the things that they need, but I don't need to talk about all those things right now. What I'm going to do is I'm going to just say, here's how I execute on the part of my solution, like the sliver of my solution that addresses the root cause so that we can then solve the problem and hit the objective that we were just talking about. And the beauty of this is it's so much easier on me. Like I don't have to describe all of the features and all of the services that I offer. They don't have to learn a bunch of stuff that they're not familiar with. 
and I'm actually talking to the thing that's keeping them up at night. I'm gonna say, this is the thing. I know how to solve the thing that's bothering you. Even if it's something as trivial as someone's freaking out over a bad review. I mean, that's pretty common. Like somebody will, will, will like write a bad review for a local business and then the business owner's like, oh my gosh, I can't believe they said that. I mean, th th that's such a misunderstanding. We, that's not at all what even happened. And now people are gonna read that review and nobody's gonna wanna work with me. And it and it's really stresses people out. And so if that's the case, I'm just gonna talk about my, the, the sliver of my solution that deals with reputation management and how I might be able to get the review removed if it's like a spam review, but even if I can't, I can just bury the review with a bunch of other good ones and I'll show you how that works. And then people will buy the entire solution to solve that one problem. Now, of course, I'm gonna do all the things in my solution, but when we get to the rest of the stuff, it's like that's after the sale, right? Like I'm just selling the thing that matters right now and people will buy that. And the the kind of, I think the, the key that sort of unlocks the success here is that when I'm selling a solution to these specific problems, it's not a one-time fix. It's an ongoing thing. And that's where the four to five X in you know, growth in your revenue comes. So, so instead of selling like a $2,000 website that may or may not fix the problem, I'm gonna sell the $2,000 website plus usually an $875 per month marketing plan that includes all of this stuff for like dealing with the website, their email, their Facebook, their Google business profile, reputation management, like all of that stuff is kind of bundled into this solution. And 875 times 12 months, that's like $10,500. Plus you already sold the $2,000 initial setup. So you're like $12,000, $13,000 from the same clients, from the same exact people that otherwise would have just given you $2,000. It's a huge shift. It's, it's, such a, it's such a monumental shift in the entire world of web design. And I think it's just such a critical thing. But there is another thing that I think is important, which is like, how do you get in front of the clients in the first place? <laughs> like, how do you actually get these conversations started? And I think lead magnets work really well for web designers. If you realize that lead magnets for web designers are completely different from lead magnets from basically any other industry. And so I put together this video over here so you can see the difference between lead magnets for web design versus all of the other lead magnets and actually you know, get some good results coming in from that and land these clients where if you just landed 10 clients, you would make more money than selling 40 websites. So check out this video right here, or if you wanna see how we're getting some leads through our lead magnet, which we call Local Legends, through Local Spotlights, I'll put a personal training up there as well. So either way, check one of those out and I'll see you in just a minute.